I wish I could be this tall, like I felt like I was too short. When the search for height turns to surgery. A lot of patients believe that this is a very shameful thing to do. This is becoming one of the most popular new cosmetic surgeries. And we're doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for other people's approval. And I just felt like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. A successful career hits a life-changing roadblock. She was having headaches and she was uh, passing out. She didn't show any weakness whatsoever, and I think that just shows how strong her character is. Being here blows my mind. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. What would you do to be taller? It turns out some are shelling out a lot of money and undergoing radical surgery. What started as a rarely used medical procedure has now exploded into a popular cosmetic operation. Anne-Marie Medawake goes inside the booming world of limb lengthening surgery. Julian Prejean dedicates hours of his day studying to become a doctor. But for years, in the back of his mind, he had a constant nagging feeling. He's too short. Growing up in Montreal around his taller brother reinforced his belief that he was not enough, that taller was better. Because I used to look at my brother and be like, oh, he's tall. Like, I looked at him and I was like, I wish I was, could be this tall. Like, I felt like I was too short. As a teen standing at five foot nine, Julian stopped wishing and started working out. He hoped he could force his body to change and grow, but it only increased the comparing and falling short. I started working out a lot and, you know, comparing myself uh, to other people, and I, I started being self-conscious about it, you know? But can you give me some examples of when you felt too short? What kind of scenarios were you in? Sometimes I would uh, catch myself looking at people and in my head, I was comparing my height. Mm. To me, it became uh, really in, like intrusive thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, How did it make you feel about yourself when you would do the comparing? No, I, I didn't feel good at all. I, I felt like I was stuck. So you're stuck in that bad feeling? Yes, but just the fact of being stuck there makes you feel a bit, first, self-conscious, but it makes you feel a bit nervous. You're like, what if I, I, I was taller, what if this, what if that. To dwell on thoughts like that is never good. It's never a good thing, you know? Julian was trapped in those thoughts for seven agonizing years. He wasn't growing, but his feelings of inadequacy were. He obsessed over his body at the gym. He even explored growth hormones to gain a few inches. He had almost given up hope until he found a surgical procedure he believed would change his life. So I, I got interested into, uh, you know, doing some, some research and uh, see if there was a possible way to get taller. And there's only one way. And that is? The limb lengthening uh, surgery. It's the only scientific way. Uh, once you're, I mean, once you're done growing uh, naturally. The surgery is called stature lengthening. And this clinic in Montreal is the only place in Canada to have the procedure done cosmetically. And now, with the technology advancements, this is becoming one of the most popular new cosmetic surgeries. Dr. Marie Gadelovich is an orthopedic surgeon who has been fixing bones for corrective purposes since 2011. But she started operating cosmetically in 2018. How did you get into doing this kind of surgery? So my main practice is limb lengthening deformity correction. And so when you start to do that kind of a practice, people reach out all the time. And so I started to get a lot of emails about doing it. And then I started to see patients that came back with disasters from other places. And that was- Disastrous leg lengthening yeah. surgeries done yeah. by- In other countries that probably shouldn't be doing them. And, or by surgeons that don't have the same training or don't have the same experience or doing techniques that are dangerous. And those patients finally convinced me that this is something that should be offered in Canada. With the patient's permission, Dr. Gadelovich films her surgeries. Today, after years of wanting to be taller, it's finally Julian's turn. Today we're operating on a patient who's coming from Quebec. And uh, he's coming today for a bilateral femoral lengthening, this patient. This may be hard to watch. You're about to see Dr. Gadelovich break both of Julian's legs. 
shop them. Let's do. The break allows Dr. Gadelovich to insert the nails, titanium rods that will lengthen his legs and eventually enable him to grow taller. So we're going to insert the nail up to the level of the osteotomy. Then we finish breaking the bone, push the nail the rest of the way, block the external fixator. Limb lengthening surgery has been around for more than seven decades to correct medical deformities. In the 1950s, a Russian physician named Gavril Ilizarov revolutionized the field with a device known as a circular external fixator. It was an archaic looking apparatus. The fixator was a large metal frame that wrapped around the leg externally. It was attached to the bone through the skin with wires. 70 years later, the lengthening has been revolutionized and the device is hidden inside the leg. Let's talk about the surgery because it both fascinates me and freaks me out. Okay. You're breaking people's legs, but there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, essentially, it's a controlled break. So the way the surgery works is that we're going to be inserting a nail inside the bone. And this nail is key to the success of this surgery. This animation, given to W5, shows how it works. The rod is inserted in his leg, attached to both ends of the broken bone. It's designed to twist and expand inside the leg. As the rod gets longer, it pushes the bone apart, leaving a small gap. The body fills that space with new bone. And then following that, patients are allowed to walk. So we get them up and walking, same day of surgery with a walker. And then a week after surgery, they start the lengthening. Julian's goal is to grow by three inches. While the break happens inside the OR, the lengthening happens at home using this magnetic remote control device. When it, when it spins, it makes the bolt inside my leg uh, turn like that, which extends the rod by 0.25 millimeter every time. Millimeter by millimeter, Julian is getting taller but it can take up to 80 days to grow a few inches. Is that painful? Okay, when you start lengthening, the first few centimeters, they're not as bad because you have, uh, still have some uh, flexibility in your muscle, you know, they're not too tense. The pain comes from six or seven centimeters. That's when it started to be, like my muscles were tighter, uh, sometimes it, it could be a bit painful. I got some, some burning sensations on my, my right calf, so we needed to slow down the lengthening process that went away. As the bone is healing and growing, Julian needs to adjust to his new proportions and relearn how to walk. Every step is slow and grueling as he works to build back his strength and stamina. Eventually, I saw that my legs were, were longer by do, in the lengthening process. Yeah. There was a time where I, I got in the shower and I looked at it, oh, it's quite long. Like, I noticed. How did you feel? Looking at them being longer, I was like, okay, this is working, this is good. And then another centimeter, another centimeters, and then I started going out with my friends and they, 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 they started seeing it. And I was like, okay, this is good, it works. Five and a half months after the surgery, Julian returns to the clinic. Moment of truth. Where are you at? Just don't stand next to me. Because <laughs> now you're really dull. So you're definitely past the six foot mark here. You're at six one with your shoes, man. A quick height check, then Dr. Gadelovich shows Julian the progress inside his legs. Very good, so look at you. So you're making great bone. So look at this. This is a beautiful, beautiful amount of regenerate. So it looks great. So it worked because last yeah. time we adjusted Yeah, last that. time we had a few millimeters, exactly. We switched, we fixed it. You're making good bone. Everything looks good, the nail looks good. You haven't broken anything. A taller Julian has been using a walker for close to six months while he adjusts to his new stature. He's about to get some more good news. You can go to crutches though. You don't need the walker. It's the walker no, and the crutches. I didn't know. I didn't know because you know yeah. what? This way I can go out and do certain things. Yeah. But when I'm going to be without the walker and yeah. I'm going to be able to do even more things like yeah. going to the gym and seeing even more of a difference, you know? Yeah. How does that feel? Oh, it feels good. It really feels good. Yesterday I was so happy. I was walking around the house. I was like, hey, I'm able to walk, I'm able to walk. It doesn't look pretty right now, the way I walk, but at least it's one step towards my independence, you know? And it's a huge mental stride for Julian. He says his feelings of inadequacy centering around his height are starting to fade. A big reward that came at an even bigger cost. It's an expensive surgery. How much does it cost? It costs 90,000 Canadian dollars. 
So most of that goes for the cost of the equipment. The technology is very, very expensive. It's about 22,000 Canadian dollars per nail. And so you need two of those to be able to do the surgery. You need three months of physiotherapy. You need to stay with us at the hospital for two nights. So there's a lot of expenses in there. Along with the expenses, there are risks. With any surgery, complications could occur. Dr. Gadelovich warns of one of the most serious, a blood clot that could move from the legs to the lungs. And when that happens, it's called a pulmonary embolism. And that can be life-threatening. We've never seen it. We do a lot of things to prevent complications. And usually when I talk about the complications with the patients, we go through what can it be and what do we do to prevent it? What could it be and what do we do at the center to make sure that that doesn't happen? What about concerns over, you know, will I have arthritis later on in my life? So we don't think that patients that have this lengthening procedure done end up having more risks for arthritis in the long term. We don't think. Despite the risks, the cost, and the long recovery for Julian, he says, He's never been happier. Yet initially, he kept the surgery a secret from his family. You mentioned you didn't want to tell people ahead of time. There's a lot of stigma, I think, around yeah. oh, this yeah. kind of a surgery. Can you talk to me about that? This is, uh, this is very important. There's so much stigma around this surgery. They feel like, okay, this guy is, is willing to admit that if he felt like he was too short, so he must have a big complex, like he must have a big, 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 big problem. Like, and, this sometimes people can af be afraid of that. What negative comments did you hear? Oh, it's crazy. Uh, it's not going to fix the way you feel. Uh, why would you do that? Your kids are not going to be tall because genetically it's st still the same genes, you know. Why did you choose to speak to us? Um, because I want to. I want the stigma to go away. If you feel like being taller uh, and you can't grow anymore, there's only one way. If it can make you feel better to do it, then I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, and we have to remember, we're doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for other people's approval. Coming up. The effect that it has on their daily life is enormous, and fixing it will have an enormous benefit. Fighting the stigma of cosmetic surgery. You paid $100,000 to get three inches taller where I can't send my kid to school. When W5 continues. Male height, particularly the absence of it, is a social stigma that some men struggle with on a daily basis. It's what's driving the cosmetic surgery trend, limb lengthening, a radical procedure designed to make people taller. There's a social stigma that still exists around the procedure, right? And you might be a little bit embarrassed if people start to judge you for wanting to enhance your height. One man looking to change people's opinions about the surgery calls himself Cyborg for Life. My leg lengthening story goes way back to when I was, I think, 11 years old. I was His name is Victor Iganu. He had the surgery because one of his legs was two inches shorter than the other. From this Baltimore, Maryland studio, he runs a wildly popular YouTube channel. It's drawn more than a million views to his videos, dispelling myths about limb lengthening and discussing the real fears of men who feel short. Angelina, would you date guys who are shorter than you? I would. You would? I mean, yeah. Yeah? No, the truth. I would. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Now, why? Yeah, now because we want to get the why. I just, I just feel like, you know, if they're taller than you, they feel like more, to me, they feel more protective. He teaches his online audience about limb lengthening surgery. Decided to you know shoot a few videos on the topics that were most common, and it started to gain this traction. And I realized that there was this underground community of people that wanted to know about limb lengthening, and I decided to go forward with it. What are people curious about when they reach out to you in those DMs? I think the most uh, common question that I get is, can you recover from this and look normal and, not, and blend back into normal life? Because a lot of patients believe that this is a very shameful thing to do. Shame is a really strong word. Why do you think it's attached to this idea of limb lengthening? I think. The shame comes from, you know, the cosmetic aspect of this. But a lot of them are like, oh my gosh, that is one thing that I don't want to attach to me is, you know, getting taller because of a surgery. A lot of these patients basically say, you know, I don't want to tell my family. I don't want to tell my friends. They don't want to know, they don't want anybody to know that they What do they think will happen if they tell their friend? They're going to, they're going to get shamed. They say like, what, you paid $100,000 to get three inches taller where I can't send my kid to school. But when you hear about the mental pain that a lot of these patients are going through, you start to understand a little bit. And you start to say like, well, women aren't being judged for their cosmetic procedures, why should guys be? 
Walking down the street in Vancouver, Puneet Sin, like many men below average height, is constantly comparing himself to others. So when we're walking down the street, you know, you see a group of guys walking towards us, maybe your age. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, most times it's there. I would say 70, 80 percent of the times it's like there, not mine. Yeah, I wish I was this height. Dance is Puneet's passion, spending most of his free time honing his street dancing skills. Off the dance floor, Puneet feels his true calling is acting, yet he believes his height of five foot six inches is holding him back. Since I'm an actor, like you know, all uh, right, so being rejected from a lot of roles just because. And people are sometimes very subtle about it, so they don't, they're not always onto your, like, to your face and they're open about it, but sometimes they are and they say it as it is. What would they say? You're too short for the role. They would tell you that straight up, you're too short for this role? Yeah. A lot of directors came up to me and they were like, oh, you're really short. Like, okay, that's the first thing. I okay, guess so you say it when you. Okay, okay. How does that feel? You did this great performance. You're at a festival, and the first comment out of a director's mouth says, "Hey, you're really yeah, short." Yeah, yeah. You could have commented on my acting first or something. <laughs> Puneet has been obsessed with his height since high school, where bullying was commonplace. People say I'm short, but they would say I'm small, or they would say I'm weak and which turned into bullying. Did you know that was because you were smaller? Is that what you felt that it was happening? Like, they didn't have to say it, but in intuition, like, I knew it. it that's why it was happening, because I'm not able to protect myself. Puneet is now taking the first step to change his life. He's waited weeks for an initial consult with Dr. Gadelovich in Montreal. We talk about what you know and what you don't know. We talk about some of the risks and complications. And then we talk logistics. Is that good? Yeah. All right. The first meeting is online, where Dr. Gadelovich tries to understand Puneet's desire for more height. What is your goal? What do you have in mind? Uh, honestly, as much as I can get. In terms of the reasons why you want to do this kind of surgery? A lot of career reasons, like I've been rejected a lot of times from like roles and like career sort of aspects. Have they told you specifically that it's because of your height? Yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. Then, a mental health check. You've never had to take medication for anxiety or for depression? No. After a full explanation of the surgery, Dr. Gadelovich reveals the cost. And so in Canada, the cost basically comes down to about 85,000 plus tax, which is around 90,000. Puneet knew it might be more than he can afford. So he looked into clinics overseas that perform a similar surgery for less. So a lot of facilities like in Turkey and whatnot, they offer like a separate facility where patients stay for like three months where they're you know, recovering. Yeah, so it's expensive surgery. For sure it's going to be cheaper in Turkey, um, but the problem is it's not as safe. The risk of an infection, a deep infection, is over 10%, which is huge. That's the type of risk that I'm not willing to take for a cosmetic lengthening. Surgeries performed overseas may be more affordable, but doctors in some of these clinics are known to take on dangerous practices that increase the risk of infection. A risk Puneet has thought long and hard about, especially since he wants the surgery without his family's support. Mostly they're opposed to it. They're like, yo, okay, yeah, no. But I told them I'm gonna get it done. And what'd they say? They say no. But I'm like, I'm not happy with my height, whatever. Puneet's reasons for wanting this surgery echo many who are obsessed with the need to be taller. What about psychological evaluation? Things like people wanting to get leg lengthening because they're depressed or any other kind of you know, struggles that are going on aside from wanting to feel taller. So the, the worst treatment for depression is surgery. So we don't treat the depression with the surgery. Who makes a good candidate for surgery like this? The best candidates are patients that have been thinking about this for a long time because the effect that it has on their psyche, the effect that it has on their daily life is enormous and fixing it will have an enormous benefit. So there's a lot of psychology going on. T tons of psychology. On the psychology side, there is something called height dysmorphia. Some doctors will argue that this kind of a surgery plays into that. What's your response to that? So there's a distinction between height dysphoria, which is unhappiness, and dysmorphia. So if we can't see it, then it's dysmorphia because they're seeing it, but we don't see it. But height isn't that. If you know a man is five foot three, you see it, I see it, it's noticeable. He's not crazy in thinking that the world sees him differently than a man who's six foot or five foot ten.
We don't just see it. Research shows that more height means more money. A 2016 study in the British Medical Journal, which looked at more than 100,000 people, found that an extra two and a half inches of height is associated with a $5,000 increase in annual salary. Is the world really a different place for men who are not as tall? So there is something about being taller and having this power and, and domineering and being able to, to be in a management position. People can get there. Uh, short men have gotten there. They can continue to get there. It's how they perceive themselves, I think, that's the most important. And that's the reason why they come to see us. They want to perceive themselves how they feel inside, which is taller. So we know what the surgery can do. It can make you taller. What can't it do? The one thing that it can't do is automatically guarantee that you're going to, you know, get that date with that girl. It can't guarantee that you're going to get that promotion at that job. Um, those are the things that it can't do. But what it's going to give you is the confidence. And then that will make you feel better, hopefully, if this was a real insecurity, if you cure this insecurity, and that will make you more confident to achieve those things in those other areas of your life. Back in Montreal, Julien Prejean is recovering from limb lengthening surgery that cost him $90,000 for three and a half inches of height. At six feet, Julian says he has a new perspective on life. Sometimes I get into inside places and I'm the, the tallest guy, which has never happened to me before. It's like, it's a different feeling. He's finally unlocked that feeling of being not enough, silencing the agonizing thoughts and insecurities that persisted for seven years. The feeling, the confidence that comes with it, you feel like you're ultimately your best self right now. You don't have to think about it anymore. You don't, you're not held back. Finally, I can stop wanting this thing so much because it's done now. I have the result for the rest of my life and I can move on to the next challenge. The company that manufactures the hardware that lengthens patients' legs is working on a third generation titanium nail. It would give patients full weight bearing ability right after surgery and that would shorten the recovery time.